Yeah, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I try to use the time and very briefly go through the general wind energy concept and then move toward the small scale wind energy systems and uh, cover some aspects of that. Uh, I, I probably would talk more about the technology behind wind energy systems uh, and less about the wind distribution. Uh, next speaker will talk more about that. So uh, I put all these things in this uh, slide here, whatever I wanted to uh, explain. On your, on this slide, on the, on the first um, graph, what I have, I have the distribution of the uh, sources for energy production and energy consumption, so up to 2035. And if you see here, the growth of the wind energy is more than the other sources of energy. So we, we have some nuclear power growth and other, but if you look at renewable energies, it's more than the others. In this context, I compare just on renewable energies. If you look at here, if you can read it, the first one, the red one, is the biomass, and the green one is the wind energy, and the solar and the others are there. So if you see, again, we see a significant growth in wind energy. Um, this one is a very interesting picture. If you can read it from here, this is Australia. So what we have here, I have here the capacity factor. Uh, capacity factor considers everything which relates to production of the wind energy, which might be uh, the availability of wind, which might be the, if that wind available is close to the city, which might be the cost that you need to spend on installation, which is on top of the hill or mountains or somewhere else. And if you look at here, Australia just is the second on this graph comparing with the other countries. So the capacity factor of the wind energy of Australia is quite high. And why it is second? Because this is the offshore wind turbines. Um, so if you look at some countries, like European countries, that they do a lot of wind energy, uh, they are ranked like 27%, 25%, while Australia is in this graph is 37%. So we have the opportunity. And, and here I put the, uh, a graph of the cost on the wind energy, and as you see, the cost on the wind energy, this is a small scale wind turbines, this is a large scale wind turbines, it's going down, and now this is comparable with the traditional uh, ways of energy production that we have around the world. So two cents per kilowatt is what we now pay for the electricity. Um, this is probably the wind distribution that Basson wanted to show. I have it, this one here, and you might see it again. Uh, I don't want just to spend time on it, but as you see here, two states, which is Western Australia, three, and South Australia and Victoria, they have got the main resources of wind, and uh, probably this is the national target, which is quite well aligned with that wind distribution. Probably in this area, this is where we have got more solar. So if we want just to concern on renewables, we can solve the problem of energy production. Uh, this is more technology-related matters. I have just one slide about the large-scale wind turbines. Probably I could talk two or three hours about all these issues. Uh, one thing which I have here is the scale of the turbines. We see that the blade span or the diameter of the wind turbine, now it is going to be very close to 140 meters. So it's quite large structure. And having such a large structure, now we are getting close to the maximum uh, span for the aircraft wing. Because technology are very similar, so probably it would be harder now from now on to go for the wind turbines which could produce more than five megawatt of power. And from now on, we need to do some jump in technology in order to be able to manufacture those type of wind turbines. Uh, and so I put some information here. If someone wants to know more, probably I could just explain it. Um, then I have the noise source, and I especially select so noise because uh, noise is the major issue. When you want to increase the capacity factor in order to make the wind turbine just available to you close to the city, the capacity factor comes to play. One of the reasons is the noise that we cannot make the wind turbines very close to where we live. Uh, and that noise issue is, is uh, probably fundamentally related to the generation of lift. When we want to produce lift, we have to have vortex shedding and we have the noise. In our university, we are working on some technologies to solve the problem. We are not the only one. Many universities around the world working on reducing the uh, noise of the wind turbines. Um, again, if someone has questions, I could just explain that more. And here, 
I especially put this picture and I want to emphasize on offshore wind turbines. Probably this is the future because offshore wind turbines, they don't have limitation in terms of size. They have less limitation in terms of noise. And if you see here, they have got wind available resources. So we can make them to be 140 meters in terms of diameter. So that's my main, main uh, part of the talk about the uh, large scale wind turbines. Uh, but I wanted just to give a picture of what we have in terms of wind energy. This is a smaller scale wind energy devices that you might see them even in some of the backyards. Um, this one is very famous graph. You have got the tip speed ratio here, which is comparable with the wind velocity. And we have got different type of uh, wind turbines. I selected three main ones and put them here. This one is the, we, we call it like uh, horizontal axis wind turbine. It, works very similar to the propeller of the plane. This one is a Darius wind turbine. It works based on the lift generation. And this one is a drag type wind turbine, which works based on the drag that generated in these cavities. So this picture says that this type of wind turbine is very efficient. And uh, this type of wind turbine is efficient, but at very specific wind speed. And this type of wind turbine is efficient at very, very low wind speed. So the question for a smaller scale wind turbine first is which configuration we need to do for smaller scale wind turbines. People doing research, but probably this is a very popular one. The reason behind that is because we could get the technology from larger scale wind turbine and bring it to the smaller scale so we don't have to develop the technology. But for example, we are now developing one of these and we are trying to make it smart in order to have a combination of these two and we want to make it available for the households very soon. I put the issues here on this slide very briefly. There are different applications uh, of them. For example, this one is a drag type, and this one is a lift type. So they are quite different. And they have got different applications. I'm not going to go through the applications. But, uh, for all of this, we have got all these issues. We have got the problem of noise. This one is quite noisy. If it is in the backyard of your neighbor, even you hear it when it rotates. While this one is not noisy. Uh, all of them have got the problem of vibration because you want to put them on your rooftop. You don't want to sit in your room and see that something is vibrating up there. This, this type of configuration, they have got many problems associated with, with vibration because the main source of the force is off axis. While these ones, they are less uh, associated with the vibration problems. Then we have got aesthetics. You want something in your backyard that uh, is beautiful. You don't want anything in your backyard and probably you could just select, look at those pictures, which one is better. Uh, then we have got micro sighting. For example, you might have your house placed back of the hill or large vegetations in front. So we need to do proper micro sighting. Then we have got low wind speed. For example, average wind speed for Adelaide, which is a really good city for wind engineering and wind energy is close to six meters per second. While in the farm, we are looking at the wind speed between 9 to 12 meters per second. So they need to be tailored for low wind speed. Uh, then we have got the wind agility. You know that when we are in the city, we have got the buildings that they could cover the direction of the wind, and wind direction changes. We don't have any constant direction like we had in the farm. So the wind turbine shouldn't be very sensitive to the wind direction. If you look at this or this, they're not sensitive to the wind direction, while this one is very sensitive to the wind direction. Then we have got turbulence. We are in the turbulent boundary layer, so we have got lots of vortex. We need to solve that problem. And then accessibility and installation. We don't want to have such a tower. It would be very expensive to install it. Probably it is the preferred configuration, but do we be able, would we be able to produce something with that? Uh, there are the issues. I just raised the questions. I'm not saying that there's no solution to them. We are working on some of these solutions, and people around the world working on those solutions. And this is the summary of what we wanted, uh, I wanted just to present today. Very briefly, about the larger scale wind turbines, this is my view. I, I, uh, I have a feeling that in the very near future, we have to go for offshore wind turbines, maybe not in Australia, because we have very high capacity factor takes time while that capacity factor drops. So we use our good wind sites. But in Europe, you see that they are now installing offshore wind turbines. They would be more expensive. Uh, in terms of noise pollution and capacity factor, these two would be the major problems in, more, in just development of the wind turbines. People around the world working on both, but still 
we need to do more, more work. Then we have got standalone applications. That is more for medium scale wind turbines. So I would say 10 kilowatts up to 100 kilowatts. That is for farm applications, for maybe um, some stations or sorry, some small cities. Uh, for those cases, even in Europe, if you see, now they try to use wind stations or solar stations for lighting the tunnels, lighting the roads. They could be uh, off-grid, and that's one of the solutions. And I guess we would see many, many applications of that in the future. Then um, there's a new method uh, for energy storage need to be developed because renewable energy is good, but we need to find the solution for that. There are some solutions to use the fuel cells or to produce hydrogen. Uh, some of the work's been done in our school. Uh, then if, if I go here again to the medium scales, uh, there would be more application for non-electrical uh, energy of the wind energy. We see that wind turbine, electricity, and use it. But there might be some other applications for that. For example, you might use a wind turbine directly to pump the water, and you don't need to just transfer it to electricity to drop the efficiency a lot. So we would see lots of these things in the near future. And then for smaller scales, I would say in 10 years, we would have lots of hybrid off-grid systems for lighting up the streets. This is happening in China. So if you go to China, you see that they have got all the lights of the streets sitting on solar panels and a small scale wind turbine in the middle. Uh, new type of wind turbine will be developed very soon for the house uh, and urban environment. Uh, the reason behind that is the current technology. It is good, but probably it's not uh, good enough because it's noisy, it's got some problem with the vibration, and it is very sensitive to the wind agility and wind parameters. So we are working on some of them. People around the world working on that. Um, then, and the last thing that I want to say, wind energy is very research intensive area. Beginning from development of the technology, continuing with the farms, continuing with micrositing, and even uh, predicting what's happening with that wind energy and availability of that is very research intensive. So we would see in the future that more fund from the governmental sources, from the companies, would be shifted toward the wind energy related area. Thank you. Thank you. So is your suggestion of um, pumping say seawater into the top of the cliff is a viable solution, you think? Uh, for storage? Some some countries try that. Some countries try that. But still if we see that price on oil goes up, still that might be a solution. So we will need to wait until the oil becomes expensive, is it? It's expensive already. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, my last question is, is bigger, better? I mean, you're telling us uh, the span. Um, does, um, say, four turbines distributed in a bigger area better than one big one? Uh, when, when we have a big one, the, the, the tip speed ratio somehow is going higher, and the efficiency of turbine improving. So we, we, we produce more electricity from a large wind turbine comparing with the small one. one. And the second thing, the price on the tower and all the, the gearbox and all these things drops when, when we have one turbine comparing with the four. However, there is a limitation. We cannot just go up, up, up. Because uh, as soon as we start increasing the dimensions, the, the power available that we could capture from this wind turbine increases with the uh, square of diameter, while the cost goes up with the cube. So we get to the point that somehow it's saturated. We cannot go higher than that, than that unless we develop a new technology. If you look at aerospace industries, we couldn't go to the larger scale unless we had made composite materials. We use composites so we could have larger plane. So if you want to go for another larger plane, we need to develop something better. All right, well, on, on that note, uh, just one last question then. Being optimistic, when can I install one of those in my backyard without my neighbor complaining? Uh, yes, very soon. Very soon. <laughs> <laughs> That's very optimistic. Please join with me thanking Mazia again. Thank you.